Hey YouTube, it's been a long time since I got into the Cushman Truckster, but it's time. So a lot of things have changed. Got a new garage, new place to be, yada yada yada. Working for a new company that's providing me the opportunity to buy some parts for this thing at super super cheap prices. Uh, and here's where we're at. I got a wheel hub. Finally. Took me two years to find that wheel hub. That was a really rare one apparently. Uh, and always looking for more of those. I will include the part number in the video description. So please, if you have this part number, I would definitely buy another one just to have it on hand. Got a temporary 12 volt battery in the back. Deep cycle. It's just so I can test the 12 volt system, which I am designing as we speak. And as you can see, there's a whole lot of new stuff. Now the cab is painted white. I went through, I decided to go with this color because a couple of my gauges are not backlit and I want to make sure I have the best chance of being able to see them at night. Uh, among other reasons, it's just a cleaner look, I kind of like it. Um, I POR'd everything, POR15, in case you're not familiar with it. It's a great product um, to get rid of all the rust. You can see down here my street sign floor pan. Uh, I actually have a lot of street signs for it. There's a couple over there that are the bed. And that's not attached right now because I'm still doing wiring and I'm running wiring underneath of it, yada yada. I didn't cover up where the serial number is right there for obvious reasons because I still want to be able to register it. Uh, the box is not actually physically screwed down yet, but it's in for now to start doing the wiring. Um, and I haven't figured out the final placement of it until I figure out the floor. So, so here's where I've decided to put a fuse panel. This is my 12 volt fuse panel. We've got a couple of relays there. Now I've got some fuses inside this fuse panel that are hot at all times, namely the brake, uh, horn, that sort of thing. Uh, and I think the dome light's going to be off of that too. Anyway, and then I've got some of these that are triggered from a relay, which is triggered from the ignition key, which is right there, and I've been wiring so it's not in its hole right now. Um, and when that turns on, that also kicks on this switch right here. Now, obviously this is not the switch I'm going to use because this looks not at all professional. <laughs> um, but this hole over here is where the big emergency switch is going to go, or it may actually be a little bit further down from here the hole later. Anyway, uh, and that's going to be the big red button that you see that will alert you know people other than me if there's a, some sort of an accident how to shut the thing off. And so it would be pretty obvious obviously just hit the big button. And what that will control is this big main contactor down here. Now it's a little tough to see. I'll bring you in. That is a Gigavac relay. It's rated for 350 amps continuous. Although it says it can take shorter bursts of much, much higher, um, since I'll only ever see 425 amps with this at full throttle, which I should rarely see anyway. Uh, this one will be more than... Over here you have this big mean looking controller. Now this thing is cool because it's a, it's a controller from a uh, forklift, I would assume. I got it on eBay for $150. Sort of unbelievable. It's probably a at least a thousand dollar unit. It's made by Sevcon. It's a PP784. What's really cool is you can program a bunch of stuff in it. You need the five hundred dollar controller to do that, but which I don't have. But it has out of the box regenerative braking. Some proportional. I don't understand how it all works, but it has regenerative braking, which is very cool. That will help me to give me more mileage out of my pack. Now, onto this wiring stuff here. This guy right here is a Crydome solid state relay. You'll notice there's a big red boxy looking thing coming out of it. Now that is the precharge resistor for the main contactor. See, we don't want that main contactor to open unless it has something to take up the charge first of whatever's on the other side of it. In this case, it's just the controller itself. That's the only thing that's on the other side of that relay. But there's some capacitance in that controller and we don't want that to arc across those terminals inside of that relay and leave it op uh, leave it closed, thereby <clears throat> making it so that the reset button I told you up here doesn't do anything. So we don't want that. So in order to avoid that, we use this relay right here. And this what this does is it gives that big old resistor just enough energy across the 72 volt pack to be able to charge up the capacitance and only take a little bit and at the same time, this guy right here is a six second timer. It's actually rated for minutes, but it don't, its lowest setting is six seconds. 
and that feeds the big gigavac. So what happens is when you turn the ignition on, this guy goes first, feeds that resistor over the 72 volt load side, which feeds into this. Of course, you don't want to touch the throttle uh, while that is on there because you will cook that in a heartbeat. There it is. As you may have picked up on if you've been following the series here, I have upgraded to a 72 volt pack. This big old bank of batteries right here is only 60 volts worth and some of them are kind of tired because they were part of a used pack. Some are new. I was still going to go with them anyway, but guess what? They're not available anymore for less than what it would cost for me to buy a whole other pack from somebody that is a brand new pack. Anyway, that's sort of being in the battery business deals. But, so this one's going to end up in my um, solar cabin project, which is, will still be a great use for them. Uh, anyway, those are all in parallel to get them all charged up right now. So, looking over here, this means that my battery configuration tray is not going to work anymore, of course. So that all needs to be redone. Um, given the weight and what the aerodynamics of this thing is going to be once the walls are constructed, which will go up and parallel those, have a roof. We'll come to a boat tail sort of configuration here at the end, as you can see, and it will also the roof will taper down at about an 11 degree angle as well. Anyway, that should get me in the 50 miles per charge range with regenerative braking, hopefully, uh, maybe considerably more. Those are very, very optimistic, excuse me, very, very conservative numbers. So hopefully, we'll see more than that. Uh, the wiper motor had to go. It did not function. I wasn't willing to cough up the money it would take to buy another one on eBay. So I'm going to have to go without. It will be fine. Rainex is your friend. I will fill those holes with something here. Here is my Neato 0 to 500 amp gauge. Uh, and you may have noticed, if you're clever, there is the shunt for it right there going on to the armature. And that shunt should provide me an indication of how much current is going through the motor. Now what I don't know is whether or not it will also read current going backwards. We should find out um, as soon as the regenerative braking was working. Now this is going to go thusly and of course be screwed in and I may put some other instruments into that I haven't decided just yet but at least from where I'm sitting in the driver's seat I can see my amp gauge and know exactly how hard I'm pushing the batteries, controller, motor, etc on the topic of pushing the motor. If you may have noticed, over here I've got a shroud. Now I custom made this this size. This is like nine and a quarter inch. Oh no, sorry, ten and some chains. That's what it was. Anyway, I welded it up um, very, very slowly with the try not to burn holes. And this is a 48 volt muffin fan that I'm going to use a resistor for from the 72 volt bank. It too will kick on when the uh, main relay kicks on. I haven't yet figured out a way to wire an off-delay timer that will run on 72 volts. Uh, that's still up in the air. If anybody has any ideas, please shoot me a message about that. But effectively, I want that fan to run once the motor has shut off for uh, five minutes, maybe, just to get, get the motor down to a cool temperature. It's greater than the diameter of the motor and the wiring and the terminals so that I can line the inside of that with something very non-conductive, of course, and I can fit it over the motor and then it'll fit down to about here or so, maybe in the middle of these two bolts, take some very thick uh, foam tape, wrap it all the way around the motor, that will seal the fan shroud to the front of the motor, thereby forcing air to come in through this back small slot, there are three or four of them and then out through the main armature, which should provide cooling for the entire motor, I'm hoping, and it's 72 volt or, you know, whatever it gets after the resistor, it should have enough cooling power to keep that motor cool enough, uh, with being cautious driving, to not burn it up. Now that is a 24 volt crown. That's a 24 volt crown motor. Now, of course, it, it's a series-wound motor. It can really be done with sort of any voltage you want. They're designed for 24. It's going to get hot if I use it uh, at 400 amps all afternoon. It's going to be a problem. But 
I think the cruising amps on this should be somewhere between 150 and 200 amps, just going on a flat plane, maintaining 45 or 50 miles an hour. That thing should handle it all day long. Now, it is a 7-inch motor, so that is something that I know you guys in the EV world are, are going to cry about a little bit. But, uh, it's worth a shot. I got ba barely any, nothing into that motor. Uh, I got it in trade for a, for a car engine, you know, it's... And it's a good running motor. I cleaned up the armature in a previous video. Uh, and I know some of you EV guys said, no, no, leave the armature alone. It's supposed to be that way. Well, too late. But anyway, um, that motor is going to drive it just fine. I've ridden it around a little bit in the yard here on 12 volts, just running it across the battery, that battery, in fact. Speedometer is going to be one of those bicycle type ones. I thought of going with a mechanical speedometer, but my front hub does not have the pickup for it, nor is it made for it. This one was designed to have it right there on the back side of the transmission. I don't have the cable, I don't have the speedo, it would cost hundreds of dollars to get a hold of both of those parts. And what I found with this thing is it's hard to find the parts for this thing, so bicycle speedometer is about 10 bucks, direct from Hong Kong, takes a month to get here, but you know what? It'll be fine. That little amp meter did the same thing. Up here on the front, I do have, I will turn the switch on so you can see, a working, very cool, almost like the original Cushman uh, LED headlight. I think it consumes 13 watts, and that includes that little fan that you can hear running on the highest setting. I think it's the last on low. There's an idea of the light it produces, and of course there's shop lights going in here, so that's pretty good. Here's the high. So it is pretty significant. I recommend these. I think they were like 10 bucks on eBay. You really can't beat it. Uh, the housing itself was like another... 10 or 15 dollars. Big old headlight. It gives a nice look to this thing. You can get an idea of what we're dealing with here. Pretty cute, huh? The horn I mounted right underneath of it. That came from a 24 volt electric pallet jack that I happen to have kicking around. And guess what? It runs pretty good on 12 volts. Here we go. Take a listen. <laughs> kind of an annoying horn, I understand. But you know what? It was down here. We have, this was another eBay score, I've been doing pretty well on eBay lately. This is a 72 volt to 12 volt DC to DC converter. It claims 30 amps output from the 72 volt into 12 volt. Anyway, that's going to be switched maybe to the right of the driver, reach down and switch it. And that will allow me to monitor my 12 volt lithium battery. If it gets low enough, it starts tanking voltage wise. I can flip this on and all of a sudden I've got power from the 72 volt pack, but I don't need to have it running all the time. So as long as my 12 volt battery doesn't die before my 72 volt battery, everything's fine. I'll have two onboard chargers, one for the 72 volt, one for the 12 volt, and they'll charge in roughly the same amount of time. Uh, which I'm hoping to be somewhere in the order of seven to eight hours charge time, which I know is a long time for some of you guys for 100 hour, 100 amp hour pack. But I'm going with one of those. Uh, I think it's either 10 or 15 amp hour, cheap Chinese programmable um, controllers for lithium, and it's it's just limited by 110 sockets. I don't know. I want it to be up chargeable 110 no matter where you are. So if you get somewhere, you're out of power, you can plug in, and life is still good. Um, so it's going to take a little longer to charge. Now, I've also got, up here on top of the uh, pile of junk in my garage, three massive flexible solar panels. Uh, these happen to be made by a company named Solbian. These are actually warranty ones. Uh, anyway, these ones I'm going to be cleaning up and getting them working again. They're a little clouded over. These are going to go on the roof going to have a total of over eight foot of roof to be able to mount some of these solar panels. So we should be able to put two of the four footers in line and that should give me two uh, 36 volt charging capability panels which should give me the 72. Yes it will be center tapped and yes that is not what we hope we could do but it is what it is. It's the only way I can get solar panels to charge this thing. I might gain two maybe three miles on a really good sunny day. Maybe more maybe four under optimistic conditions. I've also got, will have soon, one for the 12 volt panel which will sit between them uh, in the lengthwise direction. Anyway, that'll be clear later, which will charge the 12 volt battery which should also offset some of the 12 volt needs. So if you like what you see, what's going to happen to this thing in the future? I will be doing some more filming very soon. 
Please rate, comment, subscribe. Tell me what you think about it. Tell me where I can find some of those hard to find parts. Thanks so much for watching. See you soon.